Hi, I was going to make some of my nature clusters today and I've had people asking me if I would do a shorter video rather than one of my live streams showing how I make them. So I thought that would be a good thing to share with you today. And I would also show you kind of the things I gather thinking that I might use them. Um, pretty much anything goes, right? If you're doing, you know, paper clusters, you're just gathering all your things that you've got sitting around your crafting space. And in my case for the nature clusters, I'm gathering natural fibers and yarns and things from the garden and stones and, you know, whatever, and stitching them together. So I thought I'd show you first some of the things I collect. So, of course, I've always got some of my fabrics that I've dyed. And I've dyed those in various ways. There are some videos up on that. And I promise you, this year, this is the year of a lot more videos. So there will be more tutorials and craft with me showing how I do this. But let's pick out a couple colors that I like and figure that I can do something with. Um, I think that's a nice selection. I may not make them all, but at least I've got them ready to go. And then, of course, when I'm in the garden, I'm always looking for things that I might want to use. So this is... Uh, I think these are dried fronds from, um, oh darn, the Anna Swallowtail comes to it, the uh, fennel, the fennel bush. And this is some lichen. We have lichen falling from the trees all the time. So we've got that. So I'm always picking that up because you can stitch that on. The only thing I have to be careful of is if I'm shipping something out of the United States, I can't, I can't use those items. This is some um, fiber got it at the dollar store for Halloween and so it's just got that kind of feels like almost like a polyfiber fill. It's kind of strange but it takes the ink differently and you get these clumps and that just kind of adds something nice. There's a little bit of cheesecloth left. These are some little scraps of sari silk because you know you, you t cut just a tiny piece off you got to save that. I've got cheesecloth uh, that comes in varying sizes of the holes and then this is um and it's cotton so it dyes really well you can dye this with all kinds of things this is another cotton material that i got from the dollar store years ago halloween kind of a netting and depending on what you put on it this is distress sprays and this is some india inks that have been watered down it stays soft or gets kind of stiff I've got some wool roving in different colors and that's just really neat to add I've got some semi-precious stones, all kinds of these. I've collected these for a project I was going to do that I never did, so I'm going to start using these up. And of course, you know, twigs, but even just from your kitchen, I've got um, down here somewhere, let's see, yep, cinnamon bark, and then some other bark from the trees. I have got threads, and I use all of these things on them. Okay, I've got all my threads that I save. And then I do not have right here handy, it looks like. I don't have my string. Um, oh, maybe it's back here. Yes, it's back here. Oh, some burlap. Burlap is another good thing. I love to use burlap. Let's leave some of this out. Uh, I have string, okay? And this is just, you know, jute that you would be tying up packages and things with. But once you separate it, look at all these neat fibers you get when you separate it. So I do save that. And there's some raffia. These are some tea bag strings. So see, just start collecting this sort of stuff. And, you know, if you want to work with something other than paper, there's nothing wrong with paper clusters. This is just some variety. And then some little bits of lace. So I don't know. Let, let's see what we can come up with here. Um, that green is really psychedelic, so we need something to tone it down. I probably, I don't think I feel like that one today. That's just not what my mood strikes me. Uh, let's see here. And I did not add to my green, to my things. This is just what's been roving around in my cart here for a while. So, you know, and there are people that would say, oh, don't, don't think. Just go zip, zip, zip through this and don't think and do it. But to me, that's not what it's all about. I did that. I did that for a long time. I did that with my writing and I've done that with my arting where I just like race to the finish line. And I'm like, what? Is there like a prize? Does somebody have a, a rainbow path that they're on? And at the end of that, that path, when they finish whatever it was that they were working on in such a hurry, 
is there some extra special prize? I mean, if so, let us know about it. But I don't want to play that game. It's just, it's not me anymore. It has been me in the past, but it's not me anymore. And I'm just going to let it go and enjoy the journey. Because, um, you know, there, there's people that are process driven and there are people that are project driven and I used to think I was very project driven I wanted to finish a book I wanted to finish an art project um, but now I think it's more the journey because it's it's more fun to explore there's less pressure if you know you don't finish something in a certain amount of time or it doesn't come out the way you thought it would there's less pressure because you're just having fun playing. And if some of these things don't work out right, like if you saw my video that I posted recently on stitching leaves, some of my leaves, they cracked. So what? I learned something about that particular leaf. I learned, um, you know, some things about where to place my needle on the leaves, not to place it too close together with something. Uh, you know, it's, it's all part of the joy of creating. And, and that's my focus going forward, I hope. I hope I don't backslide. You guys see me backsliding and saying, oh, i got to finish this, got to finish this. Um, let me know. The only times that I really want to be driven by finishing something in a certain amount of time is if I, you know, have, I'm doing it for somebody else. And I don't take commissions anymore. I rather keep a list instead to see, you know, when I finish something and I put it up for sale, people on my list can have first choice. Um, the only commitments right now that I do are for a nonprofit that I sometimes do some, some journals for for them. And otherwise, you know, taking the pressure off of me of trying to, you know, I have to get a certain amount of something in my Etsy shop. I don't. I don't. Um, I don't have to get anything done. But, you know, and I'm, I'm lucky. I don't need to make my art to pay my bills. It helps pay my bills, but it's not the driving force behind it. I'm, I'm very fortunate in that regard. And I never, I try never to lose sight of that. So I'm just going to going to play a little bit. Let's see if I can get three of them done while I'm chatting here with you guys today. You know, I'm, I'm coming up with some plans for my 2021. I had some nice responses to the start with the leaf challenge. And no, every video I do this year is not going to be leaves because we would all get bored with that. And not everybody is a nature lover and that's okay too. Maybe I can convert you. I'm going to try. But if it doesn't happen, it's okay too. It's okay too. All right, and see these little things that I pulled out? I'm going to save those because I'm going to do something with those. All right, let's just concentrate on three. And, you know, it's just like with collage on paper. I mean, I'm just collaging with, with more three-dimensional objects. All right, I don't, this background here has got too much purple, so I do want something else that's a little more green because, you know, I always have to do one that's green, right? That's just, I can't help it. That is just who I am. I don't know where the green love came from. I like that stained part. So let's, let's chop this off here and see what we can get here. A little bit of fraying because who doesn't love the frayed edges, right? Um, and I'm going to say this just one time. I'll do my two little wines. We haven't solved the soundproofing issue yet. We are working on it. It's getting slightly better, but we have a plan. Um, so I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go ahead and make my videos, even though you will sometimes hear uh, my husband in his meetings in the background. It, it is what it is. And if you like me, you'll hang around for it. And if you don't, then you can move along. And I'm still frustrated with my lighting situation. So you will have shadows and you will not have shadows. And that's just the way it is right now. I, I don't have anything else I can do about it. All right, and the sun's going down here. It's about 4 o'clock while I'm recording this. So I kind of want to go a little off-center on there. Let's see. I want some blue. The blues don't quite go, but I'm going to say it's all right. And let's see what we have here. Do one in the brown so we can use some of this brown wool. And I really like this dried... Uh, fennel that is just really cool now it's going to crumble okay and there's going to people are going to ask me well do you coat it with something I don't I'm really trying when I work with natural materials I'm trying to respect the fact that mother nature is not going to last forever these things are going to disappear and that's okay um, you know I'm not going to last forever right none of us are so I'm just going to do my thing and enjoy it while it's here 
and appreciate the different stages it goes through. Um, but it's a hard place to get to, to, to be that accepting. Very hard place for me anyways. Maybe it's easier for you. Not everybody has the same Susan, Susan issues, the same issues Susan does. Let's see. Do we want to use it? We probably want to use at least one rock, right? Maybe we need to pop something out of there. The black's a little stark. That's kind of nice. Ooh, ooh, I like that on that one. Uh, I might make that one just all neutrals. Okay, I'm liking that. So I just kind of... I just kind of audition things, and I change my mind a few times. Now, the thing if you're working with twigs, you do have to make sure that they are dry before you bring them in the house because you don't want to bring in any bugs. Um, I usually let things sit in the garage for a while before I bring them into the house studio. And you have to keep in mind if that's something that's going to go inside a journal, you know, does it matter to you if they're going to crack because they're not completely flat? Um, if that bothers you, then don't use them. You know, I'm, I'm rolling with it. I figure the thing is, is if I decide to pick up a piece that's got this long piece of bark on it and I want to use it in a journal and it cracks off, I can put something else on top of it. You know, um, I just want to roll with all this stuff the way it comes together and not stress over it. Um, let's not stress anymore. We've had enough stress, right? It just needs... Something coming off this skinny is nice, but it needs a little something coming off the side. Now you could absolutely glue these together. And there again, that would be another one of those if you want to zip zip through this really fast. Um, I'm choosing not to do that. Your mileage may vary and that's fine. Do what works for you. All right. I want to pile some stuff in there in that center bit. Not this one. Maybe a little... Brown would be good, huh? Let's put a little bit of brown. No, I want that yellow to pop. Uh, sorry. Okay, we could do a little bit of the sorry silk. And let's just, it might be a little stark, but if we fray it back so it's more like a ribbon piece. Oops, okay, it wants to rip. Fine. We're just going to pile that in there. I'm not worrying about making it all neat and tidy. No, I do want some of my Nifty fibers here. Might as well use some of the ones I've already torn apart. And if you've been in my live streams, I know you've seen me do a lot of these, but I was going to try and do, do a video about them that doesn't run for two hours like my live streams do. Okay, and the greens. Let's do some of these threads. Okay, that's not exactly a thread, but I like it. I kind of like it. And... We need something a little lighter to pop that stone. Okay, just little bits. You could use a little bit of the lichen. Huh? This stuff, sometimes it sews really, I mean, you can stitch through it. Sometimes it falls apart and sometimes it doesn't. So let's see if we can get it to work. All right, I did thread a needle ahead of time. And where's my, oops, I think I need, I need more of something. Maybe it's more of these fibers. Yeah, we need more of these. I could hear you. You were, you were yelling at me in the screen, right? I could absolutely hear you. So this is a, a big year of a lot of stuff that I want to get accomplished. And I really appreciate everybody's um, support, you know, encouragement, joy at seeing one of my videos. You guys, that's all the fuel that keeps me rolling. Um, those of you that have joined the Facebook group to share, support, and connect, I really appreciate that too. So, you know, I've just piled that on there. I'm not trying to line anything up. Um, I do find that these little stones get slippery sometimes. So... Sometimes you might want to put a little dab of glue back there, but I really like it if I can do it without putting any glue in there at all. Let's see how long. So 15. So if I can keep this shorter, maybe I won't sew a bunch of them. Sometimes they go faster than others. It's just uh, they do go faster without the stone. The nice thing about the stone is you can, you know, pot, you could like stitch a little bit ahead of time and then put the stone on top. 
you know, and there's no rhyme or reason to how you stitch these on. And this becomes, for me, a, a bit of a meditation like the slow stitching does because I have to concentrate on what I'm doing so I don't let go and let things slide all over the place, although that has happened. <laughs> you know, my fingers have slipped and it's like standing on a banana peel and things go flying all over the place. Um, and that's okay. You know, you pick them up, you start again. So this one's got a lot of layers, so I might just give this stone a crisscross. Usually I just do it like this, but maybe this time we'll see if we can come up at a different angle. And it may turn out that I didn't catch all my little soft bits that are in there, and that's okay too because I can go back in, <clears throat> and I'll show you when I finish this one <clears throat> how I can go back in and add a little bit more. I kind of like that. That gives it a little bit of design. You could add beads to these. That would be fun. <coughs> I hope my voice holds out. This may be a short video if my voice wants to disappear. My voice just can't handle a lot of chatter anymore, which is one of the things that gets in the way of doing a lot of videos. I need to pace myself, especially to make sure that I have a voice for my live streams. So I can see that it's kind of flopping here at the top, so I'm going to probably go back in and do a couple stitches to hold those down. But you don't have to. You could wait and see how you're going to use it, because it might be that you're going to sew it to something else. If I was going to put this on a wall hanging, you know, then I might just wait until I can, that's probably what I'll do is I'll wait. I need to listen to myself and just wait until I can get to the um, end point that I'm going to use it. So I just really like lashing the stone on like this. And these are all the little bits of fabric, remember, are just my off cuts from when I'm making a journal. I've got scraps of fabric left over and I just save them up and dump them in my leftover paint water. Okay, so I have something came a little bit loose here. I'm just going to put my needle underneath there and see if I can pull it kind of tight. Pull it over. That's fine. I can, if it really bothers me, I can kind of scoot it off to the side. Although not like that because my needle's on the wrong side. Let's come up here. And I can put my needle in here and just scooch it over. Just a little. You guys might could not see that on the camera. I'm not sure. And there. And let's see. Do I want to? I'm not going to worry about sewing anything else down. It looks like everything is on there, except for maybe this little one right here. And I can come in without you seeing much of anything else. And I think I can tack that on. Yeah. So I don't necessarily want the stitches so showing yet. But just one little stitch right there and then I know that's going to stay together like that. And I can come back and eh, I could add more but I'm not going to right now, not on camera. I might go back in and tack a little bit more in there. Get a little knot in there and call that done. There. And that is one of my nature clusters. Let's see if we get another needle threaded real quick. Maybe I can do one more. My video was kind of going in and out, so it looks like I am going to have to edit this even though I didn't want to. Such is life, right? Otherwise, I would leave it in and then everybody would say, what happened? What happened? I don't want you guys thinking I was doing something really awesome off camera. I just looked over and saw that the screen had blanked out a little bit. So I'll watch this through afterwards. And that's if I can thread the needle. We'll do another one. Someone told me about some self-threading needles that really worked well. I'm going to have to check them out. 
That thread was starting to split, which doesn't help. And no, I'm not going to edit all that part out. <laughs> you know me, I try. The only reason I would edit something is going to be if there's a big old blooper in the middle, like a blank screen, where you're not seeing what I'm doing. <clears throat> Otherwise, I prefer not to. All right, this has some straight edges I don't like, so I'm going to pull that around. I'm going to actually reduce that. Pull that down some. I'm going to take this. I want some more shredded edges and is that frayed edges. And I just leave the threads. If they don't want to come right out, I leave them because I just like the way they look hanging there. It looks like the fairies were running through the forest and their clothes got caught on the tree. Now some uh, fabrics, once they have uh, really thick pigment in them like this, this is probably some of my India ink that wasn't super watered down, they're harder to fray. And I don't want to work that hard at that. So I'm going to just... The burlap, we've got this fennel frond, don't want it all super straight, add a little bit of this thread here, and on this one let's do some bark, we'll just make this one all neutral, and then we'll put that stone right on top of there with the bark. Once upon a time, I might have known the names of these stones, but I do not know them anymore, so. And it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> Unless you're really doing something where the, the stone adds a financial value to the piece, I don't think it matters. All right, so this is going to be tough to keep on top of each other. I can already see that, but maybe if we come at an angle. I try to find the flattest part of the stone to, to sew down. It seems to make it a little bit easier, but it doesn't always work. And when you're dealing with things like the fennel fronds or bark, you can't bend things like you would fabric because as soon as you do that, you're going to crack or break the thing that you're working on, which is the same issue I had with the leaves. You know, it just means you need to be aware of it and be okay with it if something breaks apart. You know, then you just stitch something else on over it. That's all you got to do. Don't stress. It's the main thing. If we are making things because we get joy in the making progress process, um, then let's not stress about it. You know, I'm not working with, you know, pure gold and silver and copper and precious metals. I'm not. I'm working with things I picked up out of my garden or things that came wrapped around a box that was shipped to me in the mail. I do not need to stress about ruining these materials. Because you know what? I have a studio full of more. Most of us, I would hazard a guess to say that most of us have way more than we need to create the kind of art that we want to create. So maybe we need to figure out how we can not worry about using all our precious, precious goodies. When I was writing, there was a phrase saying, don't, don't hold on to your good stuff. Ooh, helicopter. I hope that doesn't mean that there was an accident. We usually have those when we have a medevac. Sorry for that noise. But yeah, we used to say in writing, don't don't hoard your good stuff. You know, we would save these beautiful phrases that we wrote thinking they were just so beautiful we need to save them for our best-selling novel. No. <laughs> don't hoard your precious, beautiful things. I held on to these stones for probably, I probably had these for 10 years. And I hadn't done anything with them because I was going to make this beautiful mosaic. And I realized I didn't enjoy doing mosaics. So then I held on to them because, you know, they were semi-precious stones. I'd, I'd spent some good money on them, more money than maybe I might normally spend on art materials. Well, they sure weren't doing me any good sitting in their little jars there in the studio. Why would I just let them sit there? I don't know, but I did that for years. You know, so let's use our stuff up. Show off the pretty things that you have collected or that you have made. Don't keep them hidden in the closet. You know, you, you, we all want to be inspired by what each other has found along their, their collecting journeys because we're all magpies. All of us 
crafters, artists, makers, we're all magpies picking up whatever we can find that, you know, is bright and shiny and makes us smile for a little while. And, you know, that's wonderful. Let's celebrate that. And instead of beating ourselves up for wanting to, to pick up every little thing and, and get all these neat supplies, let's say, okay, last year I bought all these great supplies. I have a bunch I bought last year, things that I'd never played with before. This year I'm going to play with them. I'm not going to save them until I get better at them because how am I going to get better at them if I don't try? And if it turns out to be something that is not something I enjoy playing with, well, you know what? I can pass those on to somebody else then. I don't, I don't need to hold, hoard them. I want to have the things in the studio to be the things that when I walk in there, it's like, oh, I can't wait to use these. Oh, I can't wait to use those. And there are some more things I know I need to de-stash. For some reason, I have a lot of pink ink. I don't know what I was, I think I was thinking it was a trend to do a lot of pink stuff. Pink's not my thing. I've never been a pink girl. It was never anything that got me excited. So that, that's going to have to go in my de-stash pile. And the more you, you either use up or de-stash the things that you don't use, of course that means that what's left is the stuff that gets you really excited. Okay, so now all of this, while I was sewing, everything slip slided around and is not in the same place I laid it down. And I'm going to be okay with that because maybe this isn't done. Maybe I come back here later and decide that I want to add some more stones. Maybe I want to add some beads. Maybe I want to have, because this is a larger one, maybe I want to have a dangle coming down of some kind. Um, you know, these are just starting points. Gathering up these things from the garden and stitching them together, and sometimes from the garden, not always from the garden, and stitching them together into something else. I like these. Should I do one more? I think I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do the purple one. We'll do this one. So that's some purple dyed fabric, some burlap, some cheesecloth. We've got some blue. Hmm, I've got some blue wool, but it might not be the right shade of blue. But if you mix up all your tones, that can be kind of interesting too. Love this. This has got kind of some curls in it. And maybe we have some blue thread. We do have some blue thread. Some blue thread, and we've got some white threads. And let's see what else we can do here. And I'm just going to, let's see, pile this. You know, it doesn't have to be what you think of as traditionally pretty. It's a found and gathered kind of thing. And you know, I just love these, these things from strings. So I really want to take a piece of string. And let's make a long one. And just separate it. And you just un, unravel it. So then it's got little curls in it. going to, some of it will just break apart. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just go with what you have. Make it easy on yourself. Oh, I like that. That looks good. I like that a lot. All right. I'm going to do this. And almost here layer it so the blue is on top because I want this stone to pop. Uh, yeah, I like that. And I'll show you one more thing I'm going to do. Uh, what color stone, what color thread do we need? Threaded right away. Yay! All right.
So even though this has taken me a while, you know, because I'm here filming and trying to talk at the same time, if you're doing this yourself, you're going to find these go pretty darn quick. And that's one of the things I love about them. I'll sit here while we're watching TV and just, you know, stack the things together kind of to get me started and then um, play around with them, you know, stitching them when I can. But sometimes I'll just, you know, it's sort of like making a little collage on my desk with all the things that are going to go into, into this. You know, and you're working with the stones that have got irregular edges, so you just have to um, do your best. One thing about doing these up ahead of time is then as they, you know, move around in the drawer where I store them, I'll find out if maybe I didn't get the stone secure, so then I can go back in and give it a few more stitches. But um, just, you know, enjoy the process. Enjoy the journey, because you're taking your own artistic journey. Nobody else is taking the same journey as you. We are not all trying to get to the same finish line. We're all just taking a beautiful artistic journey. And we're, we're there together. You know, it's kind of like you're on multiple planes. You're all there together supporting one another and encouraging one another. But we're not going to the same place. And we shouldn't be worried about going to the same place. You know, you know the compare game. Nobody wins when we play the compare game. So just, um, I don't know. Do your own thing. Take your own journey. Do your own path. And find your joy in the process of creating whatever it is that, you know, excites you to create. You know, don't waste your time trying to do something that was somebody else's big deal. You know, do your own kind of big deal. Do your own exciting, you know, path. If I tried to do what somebody else was doing all the time, I would be miserable because, and I know that because I tried that in the past. I used to try to, you know, I'd see a video and I'd say, oh, okay, I have to go do my take on it. But it would be something that wasn't my style, that wasn't something that I enjoyed doing. So why would I make myself crazy by doing that? I'm just putting a couple more stitches back here because I'm not sure I caught, oh, I almost forgot about these little guys. Let's just push this, whoops, push this out just a little bit so we can make sure we see it. That's all I want to do. There we go. So I see a little bit of that coming out of the edge and the side. When I first started doing these, I tried to keep them all really small, thinking about putting them inside journals. And now I'm thinking, you know, there's a lot of other things I could do with these. You can just put them on a tag. You can put them on a wall hanging. Um, you could put them on a greeting card if you're making a greeting card for somebody. Um, mostly they're just happy things for me. And eventually I'll have stacks of them in my shop or live sale or what have you. But, oh, I like that one. Okay, one of the things I do when I see a lot of, you know, where I've just piled the threads on, I might come back in here and clip the folds so that it looks a little more natural. And then I can come in. Okay, I've done that. Now I want to get rid of those flat edges, so I'm going to spread them out just just a little more. I like that. So that's what I've got. I've got one, two, three of my little nature clusters. So go out and, you know, look in your yard. Okay, for a lot of you, maybe it's rainy and snowy and what have you, but maybe you've got some stash. Um, just start with fibers. Start with fabrics. Start with what you have in your, sh your studio space, your craft space. Anyways, those are my nature clusters. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.